That game plan was executed to perfection. Ran the ball and converted on third down. Flacco and those receivers in an offensive line, that's how you win football games. This is In the Nest with Bruce Bosner, proudly presented by Science and Kirk. Every Sunday morning at 9 on CBS Sports Radio 1300. Sit down with Bruce to analyze and take an in-depth look at the upcoming Ravens game. All out and all in on three. One, two, three. All out and all in. Now, here's In the Nest on CBS Sports Radio 1300. Welcome in, everybody, to this great Sunday doesn't look like it's going to rain today, but of course, that doesn't seem possible. Got Barry Levinson on the line. We got Donald Science in the house, and Carl Science is on his way home from Vegas. So uh, we gave him the week off. Barry, welcome in this morning. How are you doing? Doing great, especially after that Steeler game last week. Yeah. Uh, Donald, give me your comments on the Steeler game. It was it was domination. Um. I, I, I predicted it in advance. I couldn't imagine that they were going to win. They hadn't played one good game. Now, I haven't seen them play one good game yet. Yeah, the well, they, they, play, they played a decent game against Tampa Bay, but they gave up a lot of points, and Tampa Bay made a move. But the defense, Barry, was unbelievable. That was as good as I've seen them play in a long time, to be honest with you. You know, it's funny. They, you know, they've had some road wins, but that was to me in a long time. That was their first significant, maybe best game against a good team, or maybe they're not a good team on the road in a long, long time. And yeah. uh, the way they dominated, the way they shut down Ben, the way they shut down Antonio Brown, except for the one touchdown. And, and it's funny. The the Ravens, I mean, if Collins doesn't fumble in the first half and the Ravens go up 21-3, it's, it's not a game. It's an outright blowout. Yeah. But, but uh, and I tell you what, if he keeps fumbling, he's going to fumble his way off the team. you got to remember, if football is a game of defense, not offense. The team with the stronger defense will win probably 80% of the games. Uh Probably, all right. Yeah. Yeah, Probably. The offense has to get lucky and not have a ball dropped or not have a ball tipped out of bounds or something. The, on defense plays the whole game. They, def, you know, and if you can hold the other team and you can score any points at all, you win the game. Well, I got a quiz for you, Barry. Okay, because you're pretty astute around everything. There's a <laughs> there's a game today. By the way, I heard you had the flu or something. Is that true? Yeah, I had some kind of uh, virus I picked up. I was going to come to Baltimore for that homecoming uh, event that took place, and uh, that kind of took me down for a few days, unfortunately. Yeah, you missed a great event. I mean, my son went to all of them, and he said, oh, it, really? was, he said it was just fantastic. But That's you, great. You had every you know big-name Baltimore guy there or woman uh, in recent memory that was there, and obviously it was a, a method to promote Baltimore, and uh, and you were missed, all right? So uh, if that makes you feel good. Been there. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> you get sick, you get sick. Yeah. Uh, all right, here's something for everybody, yeah. all right? There's a game today, all right? One billion homes will be watching it in 179 countries, and it's not in the NFL. Liverpool against Man City, a regular season game in the Premier League, will be watched today in one billion homes. So when we think about the NFL being the king of all sports, it's far from it. Can you imagine those numbers, Barry? No, it's, it's astronomical. I mean, you know, look, all through Europe, Latin America, soccer is... Uh, you know, is king. There's no question about that. Uh, I, I've never been a big soccer fan, to be honest with you, but watching the uh, the World, uh, whatever you call it, the World Cup this year, uh, I suddenly got involved in it, and uh, I was just knocked out. You know, uh, it's, it's gaining in popularity, and it will continue to gain popularity here. It's been slow going here for a long time, but I think it's getting traction now. Well, the fact that it's on TV and it's not up against football – Brings a lot of audience into it, but Barry, one billion homes. Can I get it's can I get the concession rights? <laughs> you like it? You ought to advertise on it, Donald. <laughs> you might expand <laughs> to the world. If you if you got a soccer ball, you got a lawyer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, you know what makes it so amazing? You know that 
soccer doesn't have all this commercial interruption None. that you have. In, and so they just keep playing until the half is over. And it, there's something about it. It's continuous. And there's an energy to it that uh, really becomes contagious. Well, it's a finite time. All right. And I tell you what, Barry, every game is over within two hours. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. It can't go past two hours unless somebody's really injured. And because you you play for 90 minutes, 15 minute halftime, and you know, then there's that odd time when people get hurt or something like that. But it's two hours, and that might be part of the draw. With yeah. some of these football games, last forever. But let well, me tell not only it lasts forever, but it's the downtime. I mean, because they got to, you know, they, they're going to look at the video. And, uh, you know, on one hand, you could say it's certainly justifiable because was he inbounds, out of bounds, et cetera, et cetera. But it slows the game down. Uh, so you're always, there's suddenly all this dead time going on while they're looking at a play and they're running the tape. And, we're, and it just becomes, it, it distracts you. I don't know that uh, I have a good answer for it, but I do know that it, it's, it breaks the continuity of the game. Well, last week, I have to confess to you guys, you'll laugh. I'm watching the Ravens game. I mean, it's halftime. I'm I'm upset because you know it was 14, 14, 17, 14, or and the Ravens should have been the game should have been over. I'm saying here we go again. So what do I do? I fall asleep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Wait a minute, Barry. I wake up at one o'clock in the morning, oh. and fortunately, I TiVo'd the game, so it, I just went back and picked it up where I left off. And I watched the second half, this is no lie, probably in 40 minutes, cutting the commercials out, cutting all the timeouts out, and I watched it in 40 minutes, and uh, I was amazed, I have to tell you the truth. I think Americans have... I've done that on other games, you know, uh, where I, I, you know, I'll... um I'll, I'll DVR some of those other games, and you can zip right through them at a, at a pretty – like that. I guess it is probably 40-some minutes of – I mean, how much actual time is it? Because the games are much longer. they got all these breaks constantly, so I don't know how much uh, well, commercial time. Well, it's not just commercial time. You have 40 seconds between plays. You know, and that accumulates. And if you just watch, if you ever on the Game Pass, I don't know if you have that, but you said you watch the sped up games. You know, they don't yep. show that what happens waiting for the next play. They just go from play to play to play. And all the shows are done within an hour with commercials. Yeah. yeah. I, I think Americans don't like admitting there's games we didn't invent. <laughs> there's, there's definitely something to that. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. I, I think agree. when these teams when, when sports come over from uh, and like the you know the whole world's uh, invited to play, uh, Americans don't take to it too well. They they think well, they invented every game. They invented football. Our games invented, are better apparently. They invented right. pro ba- basketball. They invented you know. They, they think it's all us. That's yeah. Well, you're approved that they invented golf last week. Wait, <laughs> wait till they discover lacrosse. Right. Well, the Indians really yeah. did lacrosse, to right. be honest with you. I mean, it was yeah. uh, played for the creator. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to football. Yeah. And uh, today's game, you know, normally we play the Browns and you're just worried about a letdown. And I don't know how many times in a row we beat the Browns. Danny, was it 10 or something? Oh, how about a couple of years ago when we lost at home to them, when Gary Barnage caught the ball in between his legs? Yeah. Do you remember that? I mean, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and they lost in overtime at home <laughs> to the Browns. Did it yeah. hurt? Yeah, right? <laughs> Well, whatever, but I have to tell you, I have to tell you that you overlook the Browns today and you'll lose, but I don't think you're going to overlook them. And it's great news that Hayden Hurst, our number one pick, is going to play today. It's uh, definite, right, Danny? Yes. Okay, it is He's listed definite. as questionable, but everyone's expecting And him Jimmy to play. Smith is going to play. Exactly. He's yes. back. Right. All right. Yeah. So. Not only, although we only have four healthy corners, from what I understand, but that's all you need, really. And Brandon Carr, what's his role going to be, Danny? I would imagine he's still going to start opposite of um, of Jimmy Smith. I think that Marlon Humphrey will probably be having somewhat of a roving role, depending on the matchup, whether it's on the outside or the inside. And uh, this is going to be the, a really good opportunity for Harbaugh and Martindale to actually evaluate a full core of defensive backs for the first time. And we might see a lot of shifting around in, in the cornerback. But, Donald, the key to the game, in my opinion, today is, look, Baker Mayfield put up 42 points last week. 
And I, you know, I don't care if they lost or whatever, and they got robbed. There were two bad calls against them. They were on the road in the black hole, and he put up 42 points. Uh, he's not going to be afraid to throw against the Ravens. Yeah, but he's going to have to do it a couple more times for you. He can sell me that he's All-American. No, I agree. And also, yeah. you know, it's like Mike Tyson always said, you, you know, you don't know. A fight really starts when you got smacked in the face. Right. And... Uh, the Ravens will go after Baker Mayfield today. Right. All right, they will go after well, him. Well, it's worth no- knowing that until the very end of the game last week, just a garbage time sack by Timmy Williams, as well as the Ravens played, they didn't get to Ben very much. They knocked him down a couple times, but there wasn't those sacks. And it's going to be very big for the Ravens to get into Baker's face because Baker's proven that he'll throw the ball well and and he'll move around. And it's going to be a big thing for the Ravens to be able to cover those tight ends, which has always been a big problem. Their linebacker coverage <laughs> on defense is bad. So well, but you know we are we are. T- talking about a rookie <clears throat> and it it's hard to believe that that guy can be so dominant to bring that team to prominence this year i mean can he play well yes but up against a team like the ravens if the ravens are as good as we think they are this should be an easy win mm-hmm. i mean how many how many rookies in their first year are, can be that you know great i you know uh, Dallas and that was played like- really well but I mean, the best I've seen is that guy from Kansas City, Mahone. I mean, that guy's unbelievable. Well, it's his second year, and he's incredible. All right, he's incredible. You you can't run the ball against the Ravens, and if you can't run the ball against another team, you're losing the game. Well, Cleveland's got a great rushing attack, all right? A great rushing attack, and we'll find that out today if they can run the ball against us because that's probably their only hope because if they can't run the ball – then Baker Mayfield's going to be on the run all day. But let me tell you, he's one exciting player, Barry. He really is. I mean, you'll watch the game today. I don't know how he's going to play, but he loves just to go downfield. He's not a checkoff guy. He just tries to fit the ball in. That could be problematic against the Ravens with their cornerbacks and with Eric Weddle and uh, Jefferson. The Ravens, you know, it's all, it is, Donald was right, it is all about defense. And right now, as good as the offense has been, it's still, what, nine points in the second half they've given up. Yeah, you know how incredible yeah. that that's is in four insane. games? That's, that's amazing in four games, yeah. Well, all you got to do is think about Ray Lewis and you remember the difference when we had Ray Lewis and when we didn't have Ray Lewis. Well, look, C.J. Mosley was back, and uh, you see the difference. Hey, you know, stay healthy. That's what it's about, but... Well, no team is healthy. Well, how, how about the firecracker that Kenny Young has provided? I mean, he stepped in when C.J. Mosley was out, and obviously C.J. stepped back in last week, but he's been proving to be just a huge burst of energy coming in from that uh, that Mike linebacker. Is he, is he from UCLA? Is that, he is. Did he dominate like that in college? No, no but, but, he, but the thing was, he was all physical measurables. He, he, he had a very good combine. He was a very uh, raw talent, but the, he had an amazing camp, so he's going to be great. But how about how great the play calling was last week after all of our frustrations for the last two years with Marty I think it's safe to say I mean Barry you can say it too but like was that the best play calling performance that we've seen from Marty so far yeah you know it's funny we all called for his head last year and I guess I guess they knew better Barry well I I mean I I guess it comes down to they didn't have the playmakers so he can only do so much no matter you can only do so many tricks yeah, at some point, you got to have the talent. And this year, he's got some receivers that can, uh, you know, get open and uh, cause some damage. I'm not thinking about next year or whatever, but it, it saddens me that John Brown is only signed for one year. All right. Yeah. And John Brown, uh, we haven't seen anybody like him in a long time. That touchdown from Flacco to him looks so easy. You know, yeah. and and we have another edge today, a big edge. It's supposed to rain in Cleveland. Now, Joe Flacco is a mutter. There's yeah. no doubt about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. With the size of his hands, his spirals have been great. You know, he's having a super season. And, uh, wow, I just, uh, I, my thoughts turned 100% last week when the Ravens, defeated Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh on Sunday night easily. All right? And so they, I don't care what Pittsburgh is. And before it's over, they'll be in the hunt. You know, Le'Veon Bell now is coming back after seven games, which I think is very stupid on his part. If he's definitely going to be a free agent, 
you know, look what happened to uh, Thomas from Seattle. Yeah, but I mean, he has to come back by week 10 regardless for him to qualify for free agency at all. So he does have to come back at some point. Well, what's why week seven then? Well, week seven was what he just floated out there because that's, I guess, the week after their bye. So right. that would when that would be him pre- uh, preparing, but I mean, apparently, the, I saw a report from Jason Lockenfor this morning saying that that he has not communicated anything official to the Steelers directly. All that is known is that he needs to report by week ten to have even the chance to sign elsewhere next year. So it's going to be oh. a big thing for him to actually. Hey, Pittsburgh report. is done for the year. I'm you, they're done. I, for, it's they're, all for they are it, done. It does done seem like they're sinking. They it couldn't. Like they couldn't sinking. complete a pass. They have. I haven't seen them throw a pass yet this year. Their quarterback is just dead in the water. He's, well, yeah, he's one slow. Good pass. You what? can't run it. You remember he was really tricky. He would he would fake a pass and then run and get you know first down. He can't run anymore. Yeah, he, he doesn't he, do anything. He definitely doesn't. He have stands the there now and just looks around. Well, they're on the line today. They play Atlanta at home, and uh, you know it's funny how they lose that game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. well, you can't count them out yet. Look, everybody thought New England was going to be, uh, you know, right. through this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, look what they did this past week. You know, yeah. some of these teams, you know, they stumble in the early going. And then somehow, with co- with really good coaching that they have, they put it together. And mm-hmm. so, I, I agree about the Steelers not looking right. But I think it's too early to say it's over for them. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, you win three games in a row, then all of a sudden everything is completely different. Uh, yeah. But I, you know, you look. I look forward to the Ravens game today because I love watching Baker Mayfield. All right, I won't be rooting for him today, but he is he is worth the price of admission. On of course, TV is not an admission. He looks like Drew Brees out there, doesn't he? It's he does look crazy. like Drew Brees. Said he looks like Drew Brees. Right. You know, <laughs> I, and he just he just has it. But uh, he's playing the Ravens today. All right, and uh, you have to have a mobile quarterback today. It's he is it's mobile. Required. It's required. I, well, we're going to go out to break now, but when we come back, guys, I want to talk about uh, the Lamar Jackson effect on this team. I think it's been tremendously positive, and I think the way they u- they're using him is great. But we'll get into that when we come back here on CBS Sports Radio 1300. Science and Kirk presents In the Nest. Science and Kirk presents In the Nest every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Hey! That's what happens when you stay with it. Way to be patient, baby. Good job. That's the way to go. With Bruce Posner on CBS Sports Radio 1300, we're taking a close look at the upcoming Ravens game. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> now, once again, here's Bruce Posner. All right, back here on segment two, and I would be remiss, and we're not going to go into a 10-minute discussion, but I do have to ask one of the owners of the Baltimore Orioles his feelings on the departure of Buck Showwater. We won't go into Duquette, but because my eyes, Duquette, Duquette really left three years ago when he wanted to go to Toronto. But what, your take on Buck, uh, Barry? Uh, look, I, in the, uh, when you look at his career, I mean, he's been exceptional. You know, he's developed teams in, uh, between the Yankees, uh, Arizona. I mean, uh, uh, he's an exceptional uh, manager. You know, is it has he reached the point where it's you know too many years and maybe he's not uh, quite as uh, into it as he was? I don't know, but um, I, I would uh, I think you have to look at him and say this, this he was a, a great manager for this team over those years. Yeah, I agree. And two things I was happy about: number one, they didn't fire him in the middle of the season. He did not deserve that. Although ninety nine. No of 100 man, uh, coaches would have been fired for that record. But there's no defense, you know, we, there's no defense yeah, uh, for 47 and 115, all right? No, 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 it's not. I mean, but but it's not like you say. I, I, there are some fundamental problems with the Orioles, and I'd be curious how they resolve it, because they haven't been able to develop their young pitchers like Gosman ultimately couldn't get it together, Bundy. And these are two talented young pitchers that can't seem to have any consistency. And you have to say, are, are both of them just incapable of it? Or is there something that we're not doing right? Because Ariato went away. He became outstanding. Gosman went down to Atlanta. He's doing much better. Uh, so you have to look at uh, the, the, some of the coaches, specifically uh, pitching, I think, and, of course, there's no way to get around the Davis problem because you can't have a guy hitting, 
uh, the way he did this year in the middle of your lineup because you're going to be dead every time you start a rally. Right. Well, it's also getting paid twenty one million. But uh, look yeah. at look at the yeah. Dodgers. Did you watch any of Kershaw? Oh my! Yeah. Oh my! Oh, and he's really not. He's not their number one anymore. And people argue that the guy who's pitching today, what's it, Mueller, uh, Walker Mueller. Mueller, this guy Mueller. is, this guy is like maybe the most up and coming pitcher in baseball. I mean that Kershaw was unbelievable the other day. I don't ever remember the Orioles having a pitcher like Kershaw uh, no. since no. since Mike Cuellar left. I don't know how you, you trade it. away trade away every valuable player on the team who knows how to really play and can play anywhere in the league and expect to win games the next year or the next three years. Actually, it'll probably take three years to rebuild this team. They got to go start all over again to build the structure. Well, a lot of, of it comes team. down to the. Well, but let me ask you this question. You know, the Yankees, obviously, they got a lot of young talent that came out of their farm system, and they made some really good trades for other young players as well. But how is it the Yankees, out of the blue, pick up Luke Voigt uh, out of the Cardinal organization and suddenly put him on their ball club, and, and this guy has been a major influence in the, the back half of the, uh, the, the season. How did that how did it's they incompre- find that guy? It's incomprehensible. We haven't found a guy. When it, do, when's the last time we found a guy that becomes that dominant? You know, uh, Nelson, Nelson Cruz. I mean, Cruz. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, we, but, that, I mean, but he was a known entity, Right, a, a known commodity. Right, right, no, for sure. I mean, even, Boyd is out of nowhere. How do you pick a guy out of what was he? he was, you know, he's playing in the Cardinal organization. He's not even on the team. And they go, yeah, let's get him. And the guy is a major force. I, that's, that's great uh, scouts. And obviously, you got to give it to Cashman. And somehow they're able to pull these players together. They've made some extraordinary trades in the Yankee organization to, to get this team where it is right now. And yep. uh, we have to be as we have to be as good or better because we don't have the, the dollars ultimately, but we've got to do a much better job of finding talent. Well, we only have one way to go. You can't go down from 47 <laughs> and 115. No, you, no, you can't. Well, so. I, I don't think it starts <laughs> with firing your manager, your general manager, and the bat boy. Well, I think the bat boy kept his job. I'm not sure. All right, I wouldn't that was the only one he was probably willing to pay because he, he gets like $100 a week. So let's switch to Lamar Jackson. And, it, you know, it's funny. When Lamar Jackson's in the game, uh, it's just good things seem to happen. And I also think that it takes a little bit of pressure off of Joe playing every, every play. And he needs to get off the field, though. I mean, what's the point? In I don't understand why he receiver? stays on the field. I yeah. don't understand it. Yeah. I really don't get it. But Lamar Jackson is going to break one or he's going to fake a run mm-hmm. and throw a bomb. It's going to happen. It might happen today. Listen, I'm with you. I, there, I, there are a lot of people who I would say, I would say the consensus, Bruce, is the complete opposite of your opinion on that. I think there are a lot of people who are very frustrated with those gadget plays. They feel like it, it messes up the flow of the offense that Joe's been running very well. But I'm with you. I think that showing a different look every once in a while, especially almost while the offense is rolling just to, to you know, give a different fold into things. And Lamar's athletic ability is a wild card and you well people you have to prepare for right. it that's the and, main and, and thing people may be pointing to his lack of success the fact that he hasn't broken one out yet but the fact of the matter is every time he's on the field the entire defense <laughs> focuses on him and eventually that's going to cause for a big play to break out well i think if you're all of us complaining about how boring all right the offense has been it's not boring anymore it is no it is but you got to ask yourself one question, Bruce, is why is it that we, we're not able to run so far this year? Uh, that's a hell of a good question. That's, and There's uh, one word, speed. We have no speed on this team. That, that's very true, especially and in the And the team with backs. the speed wins the game. We, we also have a I very Collins average O-line. Is Collins not fast? I, I mean, mean he, he, he is one of those stretch runners. He likes going to the outside, but he just hasn't had that speed around the corner today, uh, this, this season. And the other thing is the, the O-line is not a 
ton of all stars right now, and th- they're still trying to bring it please, together. Please, please loosen up on the criticism. We're three and one. <laughs> We're all just right? talking about the running game. We're three and one <laughs> in the first quadrant of the season. If you multiply that by four, we're 12 and four. We'll have home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And you, you're you not going to be perfect. But you're just you, not going to be perfect. But when you watch Dallas, they have that running back who can go 100 miles an hour yeah. right down the field and score in like less yeah, than five seconds. Yeah, but they're two seconds. and two. They're two and two. And we're That's, three and one. <laughs> but but they're, they got a lead. They have an escort. They have an escort team for that guy. They, yeah. they put up an escort. They, they have a. They haven't won a playoff game in decades. All right? I mean, I I can't... Dallas is one. No. No, it's been a while. No, No, it's It's been been a long long time. Yeah. (laughs) Them in Cincinnati. I mean, one and done. But... uh, You keep thinking that Dallas is better than they are. You you always Uh, do. You always do because you you fall for the hype. You know, and, yep. But you're talking about the excitement, and I think <clears throat> the guy that you're not mentioning in this segment that we talked about last segment that big play is, is, is John Brown. John the, Brown, to me, everything. I just... No, I said <laughs> that I'm sick that we only signed up for one year. That's the guy. We signed uh, Crabtree for three years, and he's been good. A couple drops. Brown's going to get a huge yeah. payday at the end of the year, too. It he, probably won't no, be Brown, from us. Yeah. <laughs> Brown, is, uh, Brown is a big, big, big addition, big surprise. Uh, that, that in a sense, having to pay attention to him opens up uh, the other receivers yeah. because he has really been dominant. I'm really surprised. And I'm really, really excited today about Hayden Hurst being back and having Hayden Hurst and Max Williams, who's playing lights out, or Mark Andrews. Andrews right? We And when you have two good tight ends, you go back to the dominant years, they've always been dominant, of the Patriots when they had Hernandez and Gronkowski, they were unstoppable on offense. What's really stupid is they could have gotten them cheap for a long-term contract, and now they'll probably have to negotiate every John year. Brown? Yeah, yes. You're, you're right. That's what I said. Yeah, he'll have another great year, and he'll make all pro or something, and then they'll have to get rid of him because they can't afford him. Well, he's only got it, we don't they got didn't bother to think ahead and say, let's sign him to a five-year deal. Well, it would be smart deal. to extend him now. You I know, would talk to it. him now. Try it. I would talk to him now yeah, because— he, Right now, he's happy to have the security of a long-term he? contract. How old is he? He's, but the problem is, I mean, the, we're What's his weakness? Is it injuries it's or we, what? It's injuries. It's injuries. And that's the thing. We are four weeks in, and it, the fact that he hasn't been on injury report yet is a miracle. And he, he, he just is so tiny, and he throws himself to reckless abandon. He will, he will squeeze himself through. Willie Sneed is the same way. The, the one thing that's really awesome about this receiving course, not only the athleticism, is the fact that we had— seemingly kind of soft receivers last year. I mean, all due respect to Jeremy Macklin and Brashad Perriman and those guys. I mean, we now have a bunch of receivers who are totally okay with getting banged around in the middle and having Joe squeeze one in there and won't get you know bumped up into the air and intercepted. It looks like they actually have receivers who want to bail out for the ball, which do, is good. Do we have one tall receiver who could get the ball in the Hayden end zone? Hurst, man. With the jump ball for the t- touchdown Hayden in the Hurst end and Mark Andrews. I mean, both of them are big dudes, and so is Max Williams. Look, we can't overlook how Max Williams played last week. He was great. I think he got three first downs on he third down. He saved spot on the team, probably. Yeah, I mean, he is playing, he's playing lights out, and uh, you're right. I can't figure out the lack of a run game, but again— you know, I think Joe's got the targets, and he just, you know, keep it at 40-40 or keep it at 40-30. I don't care if we only rush for 100 yards. Just keep it mixed. And that's a— Yeah, the, 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 the reason I mentioned that, that I'm surprised about running is <clears throat> they have to watch our receivers now much more than in the past. So it opens up the field. You would think that some of our runners would be able to pick some of the holes because we're more balanced, but that hasn't been the case. No, it hasn't been, but uh, let's be realistic. This year, don't you guys, aren't you excited when we get the ball now to see what's going to happen? In other oh, words, absolutely. I mean, yeah. to see, is he going to go John Brown? Is he going to go Willie Sneed? Is he going tight end? You know, and uh, yep. the, the one bugaboo I have, all right, I can live with a drop now and then by uh, Macklin because he's made some great catches, but Collins cannot fumble. He can't, f- you can't fumble on the one yard line. That is a recipe for destruction, all right? You can't do it. Did, I, didn't you have the feeling last week when he fumbled and they could, that would have broken the game up? You thought, oh, my God, is this going to be one of those games? Well, it and, was. Uh, it was. It and, did. 
it did it, and then suddenly they scored 14 points. You think, okay, we're, and then the best, the best part, and I, I, which was so encouraging, is that the Ravens suddenly put it together and shut them down the rest of the way. Yeah, it was a defense. They didn't give up the points. It they was came a deep- back. That was a big thing to say. Yeah, okay, they, they, they made a bad mistake. They gave up 14 points, but they really put it together in the second uh, half. Yeah, and uh, we can't forget Justin Tucker. <laughs> he is just... I don't even know what to say. And, and, it's and, unbelief. and they put the kiss of death on him every time saying he never misses. <laughs> they just they say it every I time. Right? I know. You know, it's amazing. Uh, he, he's so consistent. You see these other teams and they got teams like Dallas. Or, you know, these are really good teams. They don't have a kicker. They don't have a kicker. They got to worry. Like, well, he only made nine out of uh, 14 attempts. There's, yeah. no, there's no doubt. He's, uh, Tucker's automatic. It's, it's, it's automatic. It's unbelievable, and uh, it's funny. There was a kicker. Kickers out of Texas you always have to love because there's always so much pressure. There was a kicker for Texas yesterday. He was a freshman, yeah. and he kicked, I think, a 40-yard field goal to win the game. And uh, Justin Tucker said there's no pressure like when you're kicking, when you're playing Oklahoma and you have to make a field goal to win the game. And I and he came to Baltimore, and he is just I don't even know how he to was cut him. by Dallas. I think wasn't he cut by Dallas? No, no. We he was a we drafted him, didn't we? He wasn't a free yeah. agent. We drafted him like in the sixth round, or I thought he had gotten you know cut. No, I thought he had gotten cut from uh, no, the, no. Dallas. He was drafted. You, know, you get used to the fact. It used to be when you start kicking over forty yards that you know was iffy you know you weren't sure or you know it's it's, it's going to be tough over 40 yards you don't really think twice about it with Tucker you go okay he's got that made over 50 then you you're wondering if it's going to work out yeah but you know i think inside of 55 yards uh I'm not going to say he's automatic, but he's damn good. And then, then the, what was the no, game No 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 absolutely. The yeah. game a couple of weeks ago he kicked a few in the rain. All right, yeah. like 50 yards. I don't know. I guess one he's day he's going. One day he's going to miss because everybody misses, and then every, yeah. every. I, I remember, yeah, I remember an article in the Sun paper when it was between Tucker and uh, the other kicker we had, who was really good. That came from Cleveland. Um, I just went blank on his name. The field goal kicker, <laughs> oh, terrific. Back in the fifties. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Just uh, when you know um, he, he came from the Browns when they when we messed picked over, that team up. Barry? Yeah, Matt Stover. And so they were saying about keeping right. Tucker and letting Stover go, and the sports reporter said, "I think that's a big mistake. We're gonna we're gonna miss him as the year goes on." Well, I uh, think that- Stover. <laughs> I think Stover. Yeah. I don't know if it was against Tucker. I don't remember because I think it might have been I, against Hauschka. I believe it was Hauschka. I know it was probably against Hauschka or Cundiff. Well, Cundiff. Oh, well, it was so. against it was against Cundiff is what. No, that was Hauschka. It was Hauschka. Yeah, your pay Stover was gone. Before Hauschka. Yeah, but like, well, it wasn't long. It might have been a year or so. Still yeah. And then we had Hauschka, who was a good kicker. Yeah, There's he, nothing wrong with him. No, he, he was here for a couple of years. He, he he missed a couple. But again, these kickers who went on to have good careers elsewhere, they mi- I mean, do you remember when Hauschka missed that kick in the Metrodome in 2010 or 2009, yes. I guess that was, against mm-hmm. Brett Favre's Vikings? I mean, uh, and then Billy Cundiff. Over, over, four wheels. Under, under, 33 buzz. Holy toe, holy toe. In the Nest, presented by Science and Kirk, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m., we take an in-depth look at the upcoming Ravens game on CBS Radio 1300. Nowhere else we'd rather be than right here doing this. Now, Donald Science and Bruce Posner in the Nest. What I say last week? What I say? Thank the same Ravens. Gosh dang it. What a freaking win. Yes, that was Eric Weddle, the new heart of the team, Barry Levinson. Did you get to see that video? What's that? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Did you get to see the video of Eric Weddle dancing in and then making the statement that this ain't the same old Ravens? No, I didn't see that. You have to see it. Go to BaltimoreRavens.com. It is hysterical. It has swept the nation. He comes in like... Ravens. Yeah, he like comes in dancing, and he said, "This ain't the what I tell you. This ain't the same Ravens. These ain't the same Ravens." There you go. There you go. It was great. He, <laughs> you know, Harbaugh said the day he retires, that he will be hired as a coach of the Ravens. He said the second that he decides to hang it up, and he's got a few years left. 
All right. But the second he decides to hang up, hang it up, that he will be a coach of the Ravens. He is now like the heart of that team. And it's uh, it's great to see. Yeah, that is. It is. You got to have a strong. You always have to have a strong voice coming from uh, one of the players to establish a leadership role. Alpha male, we call it. And he's the alpha male. And he is, uh, we got a couple of them now, Suggs and him. And, uh, you know, Joe will never get there, I don't think. But Joe's been more demonstrative this year, you know. And I think I, so, yeah. And I do see him looking at the clipboard when he sits on the bench. He still has that yeah. deer in the headlights look. Yeah, I, I think he looks like a guy I just realized, I think I do like playing this game. This, is like, <laughs> this isn't like a lot of work, really. I mean, it's really like kind of fun to run around and have guys chase you and, on and, right. and get paid a million dollars or ten million or whatever the hell he gets. He gets a lot. All right, let's take a real quick. <laughs> Real quick look at the uh, Browns. What do we face today? It's easy. Carlos Hyde all right, and Duke Johnson. They are two of the premier running backs in the, in the league right now. And Cleveland uh, certainly is one of the best running teams that there is uh, in the NFL. And that's what's helped Baker Mayfield tremendously, tremendously. Uh, and on defense, the name that's going to pop up is Miles Garrett. He's all over. He's going to be a handful for the tackles. Can they stop him from uh, 13 takeaways for the Browns and I think 11 sacks? So, and they'll be at home, and whenever they play the Ravens, it's like a Super Bowl up there. But, uh, and Jabril Peppers, of course. How how many sacks have we had? Uh, They have 13. How many do we have? We don't have, I think we have 11. All right. I don't think it's that many. It's not that many. No. All right, Danny's going to check it. right now. I, I think Baker's going to find it's a little harder against the Ravens' defense than it was uh, earlier in the season for him. Yeah. Uh, thirteen sacks is uh, thirteen takeaways is a lot. All right. It is. For the Browns and uh, the defensive backs are good, but you know. We just went in last week, and I just loved how we, you know, that first series. You know, Barry, I'm a proponent. Of the, I, I, I'd like to see the record of the teams that score first in the NFL. And it always bothers me to defer. Now, when you believe in your defense, you defer. But uh, what do you got, Danny? They have 10 on the season. 10 on the season. It was a good guess. Yes, it was a good guess. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> and it was a guess, I'll be honest with you. But real quick, before we get to our final take on the Browns game, let's look around the league today. Big game today, Jacksonville. Getting three points at Kansas City. Kansas City is now like the talk of the league. Uh, That's happened before, but they've got, uh, they call him the truth at quarterback, and that's Patrick Mahomes. Uh, I'll start with you. Did you watch him? Did you watch him uh, on that game last week? How could you not? I mean, the way he came. I've I've never seen a quarterback like that as long as I've been watching football. That was one of the, uh, it was beyond belief. Well, the left hand pass was something. That was really something. Globetrotter stuff, right? So does that mean you like Kansas City today? Yeah, I, I, right now, I'm telling you, I'm so taken by, you know, this kid to be playing that well, to be that exciting. And it's not like he's running all over the place without some kind of method. You know, he's, he, he is, he's under control. He just has an extraordinary sense when people are, are on him and how he'll make a move and throw a pass with amazing accuracy as well. Uh, Donald, since you talked about him, Atlanta with Matt Ryan goes into Pittsburgh today. Getting three and a half points. Is this it for Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh is in the pits. <laughs> <laughs> well said. So you think they lose today? They, they are. They are. They are so slumped. They can't come back. Their quarter, first of all, their quarterback is gone. His arm is gone. He's uh, he doesn't move anymore. He, what he used to do was he would tease everybody with a pass, but then run the ball and get twelve yards. He can't run anymore. He can't run anymore. No. That's all gone. I don't know. I, t- I, I guess, you know, everybody comes to an end, but I'm not ready to th- throw, I, throw dirt over him yet. That's like a stripper that can't dance. <laughs> uh, here's a game to me that really the crucial game we should look at is the Dolphins at Cincinnati. Dolphins getting five and a half after they got just annihilated by New England. Just starting three and zero, right? Right, start three and zero. I thought that was going to be a game. It was a game was over in the first quarter. Uh, yep. New England adds they get they get uh, Edelman back and they add Josh Gordon, which yet last week. 
did pay dividends. Josh Gordon had a great touchdown catch. But uh, that one could come back to haunt them. I really believe that. Can Josh Gordon last through the season without getting in trouble? Hey, I, if he can, it's Randy Moss, right? So Yeah, there's no doubt. But uh, Can they get anybody smaller than Edelman? Uh, well, no. I mean, Edelman... Unless they sign John Brown next year. Why was he suspended want, for four I want, weeks? I want a guy who's like five foot one. Right. Was it drugs? It, 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 he there was the whole like I, I didn't realize I took what I took. It was an, it was a supplement, but he tested positive for ten. Man, oh man, that story is getting yeah, real old. It's, not, it's tired. It's getting tired. It's getting very tired. I didn't realize what I took. <laughs> That's as old as the, I didn't know the gum was loaded. Right. Uh, <laughs> it, it's getting real old, and of course uh, another game. It's a big game, and I'll comment on that. And that's the Vikings plus three at the Eagles. To me. Vikings losing their, their bubble has burst. Right, their that twenty-eight good. million dollar a year quarterback, Kirk Cousins. He's okay, but <laughs> wow, when you lose to the Bills, you know something suspect. I yeah. real, I really look for the Vikings to bounce back today. I'm not sure why. I must be nuts, but I look for it to happen. And uh, the Rams go to Seattle, laying seven points. The Rams look right now clearly the best team in football. And maybe the Ravens are in the top three or four. I really, I can't believe I'm saying that, but, you know, win today. But here's the bottom line. They play on the road at Cleveland today, and they play at the road against Tennessee next week. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Barry, do we get greedy and say we got to win two of them, or do we say give us a split, come back home four and two? All right. Well, I mean that's a good position to be in. Either either one, you say you're in pretty strong shape. You know, the question is, um, how good is the team, and is is it going to continue to get better? That that'll be the the question mark because some of these teams don't look that strong, and as the season goes on, they start getting stronger and stronger. So that, that's what we're wondering about the Ravens. We're seeing an improvement. The question is, are they going to continue to improve, or is this it? All right. These, how, how, about final... just, how about just being satisfied with what they're doing right now? Each play. Yeah, yeah. no, it's fine for, right, for now. I'm yeah, just saying, well, thinking about getting season. better is getting a little greedy. All right. Well, this I final think, segment. Not, but would you think they're as good as they're going to be? Because there's some teams that look pretty outstanding right I now. I don't know. When you get who we're getting back, it's fine. We only got a couple minutes left. This final segment's brought to you by Steve Krulovitz and Steve Krulovitz Tennis. Look up KrulovitzTennis.com. He's the man. You want to take private lessons? You want clinics for your kids or grandkids? He's the guy to go to. Head coach over at Gilman. Won championship after championship. So uh, we always thank Steve. Here's our final thing. We each got 30 seconds. We'll start with Barry. Barry, give me a final score today for the Ravens. Uh, 28-21 Ravens. So you see a tough game. Donald, what do you see? I see 32-15. to 15. So you think a dominate, domination effect think, for the Ravens? I think the Ravens win. They, they, they just carry them off the field. Yeah, I, I see a 10-point win for the Ravens. 27-17. I think that... Uh, the Baker Mayfield will get his come up it's a little bit today. Not that yeah. not that he, you know, has done anything, you know, wrong, but don't be shocked, everybody, if this turns out to be an extremely tough game. Take the ball, get down there and score. It's really get, an important game too. Every game is important. It's can, a conference we, we game. We can knock Cleveland out of the box. Yeah, it's a it's a every conference game is important because we already yeah. have one loss. We can knock Cleveland out of the box, and, and we got, the only one in our division that we have to worry. And how about. much does that Steelers win really mean if you come back the next week and lose to the Browns? It it it. it it's still a good win. All right? I'm not going to criticize that win. It, it's still a good win, but uh, we're done. We're out of time. Barry, thanks a lot for coming on, as always. Donald, Thank you. tell Carl we missed him today. He'll be back. All right, Danny, great show. And uh, we will be back next week. And this is Bruce Posner signing off. Let's go, Ravens. Let's get the 4-1. and one. Wow, would that be sweet. See, see everybody uh, Wednesday night on Coons 4 Turk Talk.